Yo, yo, 74, and it's another episode of the show. Don't tell your friends, keep it on the low. No. It's like we're looking for subscribers no. trying to get some more. Oh, Hello. oh, That's crazy. What right? an intro. Right? Freestyle crazy. rap. Put a beat behind that. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know you. what tempo that was. Me but. neither. I got to find the BPM <laughs> for that one. <laughs> 123.5 BPM, please. Yo, welcome to the Joystick Show. As I just wrapped, it is episode 74, yeah. and uh, joined by Dylan and I here for a glorious, yeah. glorious episode. Feels very good. Lots to talk about. Oh, lots, lots of change yeah. happening. Firstly, though, firstly, like you said in the in, like you said in the rap, mm-hmm. make sure to subscribe. Yes, for make sure. Make sure to hit that like. Definitely. Bell. Yep. Ring a ding ding. It's mm-hmm. church time. Yep. Amen. Pastor Bobby. Are you are you Father Bobby? Nicene Creed. What happened? Are you are you are you a brother? Are you a deacon? Are you a father? What what's your uh, what's your role? Man, you know, I like to consider myself a monsignor. You know, one <laughs> of those. A good, that's a good one. That's a good one, right? <laughs> that's a good one. One of those. If not, maybe an archbishop. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Those are, those are like both the, pretty, our pretty archbishop fantastic. is real strong. Yeah. When you get when you get two things, mm-hmm. it's always important. Yeah, for sure. Or something and that sounds French. Any name that is preceded by arch is important as fuck i don't care what it is you could be you could be a police officer yeah. but you could be an arch police officer <laughs> <laughs> like think about that it's all one word yeah arch police officer. it's like what the fuck <laughs> what do you do uh yeah what have you been up to buddy me yeah do you want i don't know uh, you usually like, start I'm, i mean i don't know what do you what, what have you been up to because <laughs> <laughs> you just threw you threw me for the biggest body your body was like i'll talk about what i'm talking about for that yeah been because doing you first. know i do it every yeah fuck yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And that, that threw me off so hard no it's because I, I mentioned slightly like one thing i did this week to dylan i didn't tell him the whole spiel but then he was like oh you can say it on the show and then i could say something after yeah, that yeah yeah and yeah and he said it exactly like that yeah, like john travolta and saturday night fever <laughs> But, uh, I'm gonna break your broken leg. <laughs> but uh, no, fucking, uh, I've just been, I've been working. First of all, I'm yeah. finally working from like Tuesday to Thursday, which is cool. It's like it's three days out of the week, so it's enough that I get to like you know get on the train, go to the city, do my thing. But it's also, a routine, like, yeah. But it's also enough time that I could stay at home and like work on this and projects. I've been, I've actually been doing like a lot of editing. Yeah, I talked a lot about uh, how I streamed like the Sly Cooper games uh, uh, like a week ago. You did. So I've been saving the streams, downloading them, and editing like the best bits so that's just like a little fun thing that i'm doing i don't even know if i'm gonna do anything with it but i just want to have them because they expire in like 14 days yeah, that's so, good so i want to make sure that i keep them but other than that i would i platinum two games in one okay. week that's like, pretty impressive like fiend, I've, bro. i haven't done that in forever i have yeah. like maybe about 50 games in the yeah. backlog that i'm like one day and then the ps6 is gonna come out and yeah. i'm not gonna i'm still haven't played the game i want to platinum you know to be fair uh one of the platinums i got was like from scratch like yeah. I, and i got it in two days so i was pretty impressed proud of that thank you that was doom yeah got the doom platinum and then the other one was a game that i just needed two trophies left but they were kind of grindy yeah and i needed jerry's help for it so and it was Castle Crashers. So interestingly enough, Jerry was wanting to platinum pre sequel. Yeah. And I famously talk about how that is my least favorite platinum. It's of all not. Time. I specifically don't want to get this that platinum. Yeah. Because we'll talk about it later. I feel as if certain ways that you play a game can ruin the game. Yeah, for sure. And I really liked pre sequel. Believe it or not. Oh really? I, I I thought like I you know even though it's known as like the not good one. Yeah. For, by most people, I thought it was a very good game. It's it's Personally. fun. I, mean, it's I, I had a, I had a game. I had a very good time playing it. Mm-hmm. I should say. Um, I think also because I played a lot of it by myself, and then later on when I we played through it again and leveled up, I played. That's when I played with Jerry. Yeah. Um, but I feel as if when you grind a lot in a game, it can almost ruin the game for you. Oh, for sure. Because when you when when you play the game one way and you have fun with it, and then you decide halfway through, which is what I do sometimes. Oh shit! I go whoa whoa! I got a platinum this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, the fun just is like gone. Yep. You know? No, I get And you, I feel 100%. like it's bad taste in your mouth, kind of sort of. Hell yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I've done that's ha- that's happened to me for a couple. So of you games you have a platinum, platinum for Castle Crashers now. Now I have it. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's the uh, but the funny thing was is that when I had the platinum pre sequel, like probably one of the most annoying platinum or the trophies in that game is you have to, you know how like all the, the Borderlands games have character specific trophies. Mm-hmm. That game has a character specific trophy for Claptrap that requires you to get to at least level twenty five. Which I played is, I played as Claptrap yeah, first. Which is the good thing to do if you want to yeah. platinum that game. So you're already like 
set. See, yeah. I didn't play Claptrap the first time around, so I had to go back, and you basically have to beat the game to mm-hmm. get to that level. Yeah. And then on top of that, his his power is essentially he gets a ran, you know, he gets like a random it's a randomizer. ability yeah. that's based on the other characters from the Borderlands series. But it's random, and you basically just have to keep using it and using it and using it until you've used one of all of like the seventeen different ones that there are. It takes forever, yeah. It's fucking insane. That I think that might also be um, one of the most annoying things yeah. about some some games is when there's a trophy based on randomness or what oh gamers call RNG, RNG, which is literally uh, probably I think that's you know in real life that really doesn't frustrate me stuff like that's out of my control yeah like it would give me anxiety it would stress me out but it won't like actually frustrate me or make me sad you know it's programmed but when it's but when it's programmed randomness which is ruining my life i'm gonna be sad about that's pretty fucking annoying i get i get real annoyed with uh what was i gonna say yeah so uh, part of me was slightly annoyed because when i platinum pre-sequel i did it on my own and Mm -hmm. i did it like i don't want to say the legit way but i i fucking slaved over it took yeah 30 40 plus hours just for the clap track thing alone so it was crazy yes but i powered level jerry from level three to 25 in like a night so (laughs) nice yeah so so. and jerry was able to get the platinum real quick so in return you know he got me the castle crash platinum solid which was all we had to do is we had to play 30 online arenas matches each one takes like 10 seconds you just have to go and win real quick and then uh, I had to get all the animal orbs, like mm. the little animals that follow you. But it was funny because I thought I had all of them. And then I thought like the, the trophy was bugged. So I was like, shit. And I was going through forums and tabs yeah. and videos. And then Jerry's just like, oh, you missed one in a store. And I was like, oh, fuck. And I went and I got it. And I got what? That's a bl- that is a blessing. Because yep. I'm really bad. I know you're big on like the collectibles and stuff. But I have a really bad habit of even when I'm a kid to like get only some of the collectibles yeah and but i don't na- know yeah and then now in my head i either get zero or i get all of them yeah. that's how it works now mm-hmm. but um that you know super finicky stuff i'm definitely not a zero person i'm no. a, i'm gonna get yeah, everything I'll... in the game do every challenge i knew bobby was that person from when like the first week i met you and you know how i know that how? we were waiting for the train one day okay. high school malloy right uh, uh-huh and uh we're waiting and i you you're playing cut the rope <laughs> And you're getting two stars, and you're replaying the same level like twelve times. And I'm like, bro, I played that level. I got one star, and I moved the fuck on, bro. Nah, bro. Angry Birds, like, get one star. No. I hit continue. I I'm not get. gonna. And which is weird, because with me, normally I'm the opposite. Like when I play a game like Trials, yeah. the whole concept of that game is to get the gold medal and yeah, get the yeah, best yeah, time. Yeah. But in that game, I don't. I need to get the gold. But when it like the three star kind of mobile games, I'm killing time. So I'm just like, nah, my thing is if I'm gonna put effort into any game, it's it's gonna be a a game that I want to play, yeah, I, and it's gonna be b a game that I know I can complete. Yeah, also a game you're good at too. It's it's very pleasurable to play a game yeah, you're yeah. good at. You know, I'm not. Gonna, that's another thing. I don't like. Uh, like Jerry and I were talking about it the other day over uh, a PS PS party chat. Just like easy platinums, we were even looking at it. This fucking game came up. The late shift. Which yeah. is just like what a ten hour fucking movie. Yeah, yeah. It's late, well, late shift. I would give credit to because at least you have to like replay it a little bit. Okay. There's there's a lot. At least plat like there's a company that publishes maybe hundreds of games. Yeah. And every single platinum is like twenty minutes. No, yeah. Like that thing, is bullshit. And the thing and for I have me is like I get that those are easy platinums, but I don't get I don't have. Th- the thing is, is I don't, I don't get any there's, accomplishment. There's no satisfaction. It's literally, no it's, it's not, it's number crunching. Yeah, there's like, people out there who will get it just to get the platinum because for them it's about increasing yeah. like their trophy stats. I, I play, yeah, yeah. I play the, fu- I play the fun ones of those. Exactly. That's what I do, which is still kind of you're, you're still supporting a company that does some shady shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, like for example, like how much platinum? Do you know off the top of your head how much you have? Seventy three now. Okay, because I have about like fifty five. Uh huh. But like 10, 15 of mine are bullshit, random. Yeah, none of you play for like that. 45 minutes. The one like quote unquote bullshit one you can probably say I have is like actually not even is that as bullshit. It's 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 actually a difficult game. Wizard of Legend. It's kind of like. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, that's, but that's, it's just more so that I was always good at it. So I knew that when they ported it to PlayStation, I was like, oh, I could just. Oh, you this can just like platinum this in a, a day. little bit. Also, like the Sly game, since I've played them so often, the platinum isn't hard. It's really just beat the game, get everything. I, I've already done that a hundred fucking times. So. And then you get to do it on. Yeah, th- there's also some of those I realize that I have to do. Um, where I have to like, I have like the PS4 and the PS5 version, mm-hmm. and you can platinum it twice. I have a couple of those. Some of those I have to like look back on. I have like four of those or five of those. 
But yeah, that's just been my platinum journey. Yeah. Honestly. Do you want to hear about my platinum journey? Is this what you were? Okay. So the past to? week, I've been playing Stardew Valley. Uh, Dylan's been actually gardening. So, so um, there are some days where I played maybe only like an hour, mm-hmm. like the beginning, and then there was maybe a couple of days this week, like uh, yesterday, I played like at least half the day. Wow, no joke. And I like, and I when I stop, you know, I leave it on. Yeah. And what I'll do is sometimes I'll like skip a few days because it's like if you farm something and it grows in like six days, if you did something already, you don't got to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's different like routine shit. Yeah. But um, that game has the hardest platinum ever. Yeah. Not only for what you have to the randomness, which I'll get into, but there is also a arcade machine in the bar in the game that has another game on it. Oh, I love these. That's essentially like isaac bullet hell times 100 jesus like it's like and it's like it's like an nes game yeah, yeah imagine yeah. isaac if it was an nes game. okay that's essentially what this is Got and it. it's like hundreds of enemies rushing at you not only do you have to beat this game you have to then beat it a second time without dying once mm-hmm. and it's like you hit, get hit once you die wow like, so, yeah. i want to see this I so see possible it so like. it is not only is it impossible almost it was impossible forever now they have it where uh you could look at it it's called journey of the prairie king got it on youtube and I want you to pull up something after this too. Um, now they added, I believe, a um, a patch on console because it's so hard on console <laughs> that they you can save in between levels. Uh huh. Oh so, shit. So yeah, there's a guide, and even I then, the guide. Th- that like, no, no the thing is though, is the guy who made the guide. Uh huh. He dies in the video. He doesn't do it. Oh shit. <laughs> it's so hard that he's like, yeah, guys, just try this for like a week. You'll get it. Oh, so this is it? Yeah, this is it. I'm just, I have the volume off for safety. Yeah, yeah, but... yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is essentially the game. Got and it. And it's just this. And it, like, and, you know. It, oh, interesting. Yeah. And the controls have, like, a delay on it. No, I, I get it. So, I, so I can see it. You can yeah. see it. So, like, it's it's stick only. Uh-huh. And the stick has, like, a like a millisecond delay on it. Man. So, that's... you have to, like, really telegraph it. And what, it's, like, waves or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there's, like, three times three, I think. Okay. So it's like three waves per like each level, and then the time you have to wait for the timer to end. Oh, I see. So this shit was the hardest thing to beat with no deaths. Uh huh. So what happened was I my not only was my platinum originally uh, glitched out, but I also had to beat this with no with no ability to beat uh-huh. it. So now that they have the patch to fix the glitch that I had from my old game, I don't have my old save, so I'm starting from scratch. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and now I will maybe platinum this game. Could fucking go for but it. But it's man. fucking hard, man. Yeah. Like Stardew I, seems the type of game too, because it yeah. has so much in it. You know. Yeah. Okay. And also, the that that's not the hardest part of the platinum. So the two hardest trophies in the game are beat this in full, beat this without dying. Those are the two hardest trophies. Yeah, yeah. That's harder than make ten million and all the other hard ones. Okay. There is also a trophy to collect every item in the museum. To explain to you, so someone who hasn't played the game, yeah. that the museum is essentially a place where if you find shit that's like rare, you donate it there instead of like selling it or using it for something else. Mm-hmm. So there's minerals in the game, there's artifacts. Some of the artifacts in the game have such a low spawn rate that you might just never get it. Jeez. So like, can you? Okay, so can you Google something for me? Yep. Look up. Uh, so look up the Stardew Wiki, and then when you get to the wiki look up just look up artifacts so in the game there's like these little artifact spots and then you can also find them randomly mm-hmm. so scroll down keep scrolling so these are all the artifacts look at these percentages of spawning for some of these for some of these jesus point so, five so point five percent this one point two percent yes point one percent you have to get every single one of these jesus, man. keep going there's some that are literally like they will only spawn zero point and you see artifact trove yeah they had to add that because it was so rare to get these things that's fucking that crazy. they added a thing that to 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 help you you get you now get a 3.7 percent chance <laughs> yeah i see i mean honestly that's reasonable considering it's coming from zero point fucking two Holy yeah shit. yeah 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 so you have to get every single one of those not to fully stay on the platinum conversation yeah. but it, this reminds me this, a little this bit. reminds me of uh uh the kingdom hearts one platinum yeah so when the game first got ported and the remastered uh ps3 yeah it had a trophy is that to- the one that was all together 
This new, no, it was one like just the the first the one first the first the very first time. Okay. Yeah. So like back in that that time, the game had a trophy to collect every gummy ship blueprint in the game. But then when Kingdom Hearts 1.5, 2.5, the collection, all of them to game together, the whole trophy list was the same except for one trophy change. That trophy where instead of all blueprints, it was to get only 30 blueprints. And it's because uh, just the number off the top of my head, let's say the Kingdom Hearts one has like 80, 90 plus blueprints. Yeah. A solid like 40 of them come from the enemies that you shoot in the missions. And each one has like a 0.1% drop rate so you, to drop you, that blueprint. You would just have to grind enemies for, for hours, hours and hours and, and hours. days yes. just shooting the same mm-hmm. enemy until they finally drop that one thing you're looking yeah. for. Fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. So needless to say, not many people have the, for the original platinum. But when they've changed that, a lot of people got, <laughs> like myself, got yeah. that platinum. I don't have the original one because of that trophy. Fuck that shit. That's not a, not a vibe. No, 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 no. Just, yeah. Platinums, don't go for them. There, uh, <laughs> some of them are really st- people don't think. I feel like developers don't think about like I'm ruining someone's day. I think they're getting better at it. Now. They oh, they're because back in the day, trophies were like kind of like a cool, fun thing that you would throw in with the game. Yeah. But now it's a thing that developers very much think of as they're making yeah. the games. Which like is cool. um, like I know I've talked about this game before, but you've never played it, and you you should you should get it. There's a couple of games I need to recommend to you because I, I feel like you'd like them. First off, uh, on rush. If mm-hmm. that game goes on sale, platinum it. Got it. It's like 20 hours. It's really fun. Also, uh, Tesla grad, each trophy in that game is a collectible. Mm. So, like, I beat the game because I had fun with it, but I got all the collectibles, and then I had, like, 15 minutes left in the game, and I was like... <laughs> like, I was like, do I, do I keep playing? <laughs> I, could, I could just... I could just stop I could, I could shut my console That's off. That's hilarious. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, like, a really good game. It's, like, a puzzle platformer. Nice. Metrovania too, so it's like a mix of all trace. Bro, nice. let, let's let's switch this conversation yeah. over. What do you want to be on about? You know what I want to talk about? What do you want to talk, talk about? Some change. Times are changing, Dylan. They are specifically for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how visible it is. Actually, it's not very visible at all. Maybe no. maybe on Dylan's camera feed a little bit. But but before. but if you look at the sign, bajo trabajo. Yes. Which is uh, I guess a loose Spanish for under work. Under con- construction. Construction, yes. Yeah. I've s- there there are signs that say that. Got it. Like in like mm-hmm. Spanish cities. Uh yeah, we are officially like in revamp mode down here. We started well, I started painting today. Um we didn't do the actual walls. Everything still looks the same, but we did like this white trim, yeah. which hopefully you didn't notice it until now at home, but now we got you the- see you can see like very obvious like splotches mm-hmm. and marks and shit like that. But uh, tomorrow's when we're going to come back down here, tape that off, and then do the gray and the blue on the, the walls and stuff. So hopefully for episode 75, when you come back and you catch us next week, we'll be like, I don't want to say it, in the brand new fully revamped studio because we still got some finishing touches. Yeah, like I mean, there's, there's quite a few, yeah, but still. But at the very least, it'll be a, a, a very nice newly painted set. Very nice. I also plan to try to get some new lighting in here. Yeah, too, we so got the property brothers better. coming. They're going. Yeah, <laughs> I hate those fucking guys. No, no, <laughs> they're, gonna, they're gonna come through and fucking. There's fucking like white paint flecks on this uh, on this tablecloth. Yeah, this place is a mess. Yeah, yeah, like the the construction mm-hmm. paper, blue tape with the the, uh, the brown. Yeah, the brown brown paper everywhere. Yeah, yeah. it's just funny because you guys can't see it, but like. Uh, isn't it funny that like construction paper started off with this and then it became like a kid's like thing? Like a kid's thing? Yeah, I find that very funny. <laughs> but it's not like the same thing. No, but this I mean... This isn't construction paper. This is like... No. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you put it down on construction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's where back in the day, it was that thick. Oh, yeah. for kids? Yeah. Got it, yeah. got it. Damn, I want some construction paper now. I, I have some at home. Yeah. Let's get some good stuff. I'm going to go get some construction paper now. Yeah. I, I had to do it when I took my summer... Uh, I I did all of my work. I I never bought loose leaf. I don't have any school supplies at home. So for my summer class of uh, pre calc and calc, when I took it, yeah, I did all of my work on construction paper. Yeah, yeah, like bright yellow. That's, it's great <laughs> with blue pen. Uh, c- professional shit. I don't know how I Prof- got it. Yeah. professional shit yeah. right there. That's you're our CFO. That's crazy. CEO probably. Yeah. What was I gonna fucking say? Start wearing a suit here. <laughs> you should. Well, speaking of that, we're also working on some new content to bring to the channel. I know we say that often, but we're finally like kind of in. Well, like what we do is that like we film shit and then it's like half of that is like, okay, but like 
we should do this instead. You know, like there's always like a process to yeah. it. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. Like Dylan said, we film it and then we learn from it. Yeah. And it's like, and then okay. we also don't want to put something out. That's bad. Yeah. We or put it, a, you know. To be fair, it's probably not even the, the fact that it's bad. I think it's just more so that we know we can make it better and we don't want to just like half ass it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like mean, as Ron Swanson says, never half ass two things, whole ass one thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but we uh, we have plans to, obviously, we got fan favorites. Me and my dad are working to make Chef Son come back and make it a very like stable show on the channel. Post construction. On yeah. top of that, we want to uh, bring back an old favorite that we used to do on a joystick for a long time. How many episodes of Versus, not Versus, 1v1 did we do, which is based on Versus? Seven? I think it was seven. Might have been seven or eight. It was at least it was like around that number. I yeah, remember. Yeah. And then there was a couple that we had to like, it, we had to like redo a game. It was like, oh, this got yeah. lost, so we did this instead. Long story short, uh, a channel that was a big inspiration for us growing up, Achievement Hunter, used to have this really fun show called Versus, where every week a challenger would kind of like face the uh, the weekly champion to a game of their choice, and they would kind of pass around a belt. And we did something similar for a bit. But now we're trying to bring it back and make it more like our own. Yeah. Because even though they haven't made it in like well over five, six years, I still don't want it just to be like, oh, the thing they did. No. You know yeah. I mean? I mean, it was I mean, that that's what it was originally. It was like, but we didn't really I don't want to say that we didn't know better, but we didn't know necessarily how to like make it our own. I think that then. was it. Like we, we kind of just, just took it and said, but it's us doing it. Exactly. So that makes that makes it our thing. Exactly. But it's like, no, we, the only thing that's different is us and our style of yeah. humor practically. Yes. But another thing is, is that was, as we've grown, we've kind of found out not only the importance, but just kind of the fun of making it your own. You yeah. Know? Like now we kind of have a clearer idea of what team joystick is mm -hmm. and we can present that into what we do yeah. and i was thinking about that last night and i think i kind of nailed it low-key i think what makes team joystick team joystick is two things uh and they both start with e okay the first thing is a word i heard in a video essay recently and i actually really really like it and i kind of want to keep it in like the back of my head like a motivational word have you ever heard of the term edutainment education entertainment mm-hmm it's the idea of putting out content that's equally as interesting as, as it is fun. entertaining. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what I just did right yeah. there, you know? Totally captivated you guys. <laughs> I, get it. I mean, that didn't teach me anything. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But point is, is uh, I kind of thought about that because it's true. And we don't really do it on purpose, but naturally, like even no. looking back at a lot of our old Let's Plays, they were equally as stupid funny as they were, oh, have you heard about this? And then we yeah. just go on to a we, we talk about, about Yeah, we would just talk about like factual shit. Exactly. And then we'll end up doing a segment, but then it's about real-time events or it's about trivia. Yep. You know what I mean? Or exactly. it's about like, yeah, or it's like, you know, we never, we never really do like current events, but we talk, you know, it's affiliated in that regard, yeah. you know? So there's the idea of edutainment, which I really like and I think exemplifies this pretty well. And then there's hold, the, up, uh, hold up, hold up, hold up. I got, I, got, I got the second word. I got the second word. Yeah. Eels. Eels. Yep. We're all just a bunch of fucking slippery <laughs> eels. Dylan, Dylan got it. And I was going to say exaggeration. I don't think people exaggerate just as much as or as well as we do because there's absolutely no rhyme or reason that we should be making the stuff at the level that we do. But it's just funny to make it professional. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, I, I think... I think that is a very, very good observation. Yeah. I agree with that 100%. Because, like, looking into some of the things that we're doing without spoiling it too much, like like we spoke about the 1v1 thing, there's ideas that we're putting into play there that we yeah. don't have to and do. I yeah, and I feel the same way about, like, any of the live action stuff I want to do in the future, mm -hmm. especially with you in that regard. It's like I would want it to be what you talked about where it's like it's presented in like this real professional way but the content material will not exactly it, it will not be anything exactly. near that and it's the same thing i would say with the edutainment or edum whatever the fuck that word was was Come that on, right i was trying to teach it to you dylan that's the whole fucking point edutainment edu ed 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 edutainer <laughs> you got it you got it edutainer <laughs> we are we are we, we are the edge treatment <laughs> Uh, we, but even in that regard, it's like we're teaching you things, but we're teaching you like what the best way to shit is, you know? Like we're yeah, not, exactly. It's always like it's always like a weird thing where it's like, I guess this is yeah, this is this is tech. I'm yeah, learning. You know, this is I mean? trivia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, I just, I just remember there's a weed called Bob Saget, and now he's. Yeah. Oh man, now we really gotta smoke it. Yeah, just out, out of for like, him. Yeah, yeah. No, honestly, fucking. <laughs> you think he was he a stoner? 
I would assume so. I feel like most I feel like they did. Yeah, I feel like you in did. California. Because my follow up question is, do you think Bob Saget smoked OG Bob Saget? You have to. You have to. If a strain is named after you, you have to. I think I think people probably brought it to him. Like he would do like a set at like the comedy store or something, uh-huh. and someone would be like, "Hey Bob, guess what I got? I'm smoking you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm smoking you. I'm smoking up. the Bob." <laughs> and then Good that, stuff. Yo, if that was me, I'd be like, "Give me that uh-huh. shit right now." Okay, I don't know why I just had this amazing idea. Uh huh. Okay, so um, I don't want to talk about this again. Because I talked about it the past two weeks. Oh no! So I'm at, but I'm at. So this is no. I just got. I, Bobby, I got this idea right on the spot. You have to give this to me. So imagine Master Chef, right? No. But, but it's it's it, fuck. No, no, I'm not. It has nothing to do okay, with the show. Okay, okay. But we incorporate weed into Master Chef. Got it. So it's like edible it, Master Chef. It, but it's weed everything. Everything. So it's like there's a week where you like there's a rolling competition. Oh, okay. There's got a week it. where they have to go into the field and trim it perfectly. Master Keith. Bobby got I think, it. I think I got it. Bobby got it. There's yeah. a week where they have to make edibles. This is yeah, dessert yeah. where they have to make like a drink, but that's infused with weed. But one one main criteria: we've got to keep the original three judges: Gordon, Joe. And uh, what's they're guy's fucking cool. Exactly. It's just, it's like it's Gordon, and he still sounds the same, but he just talks way slower. He's just like that. Is, is fucking delicious. Spot on, honestly. <laughs> he's like giggling the whole time. Joe, be- Joe, Joe cracks a smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's smirking, but like way too much. He's like, like he's trying to fight it because he's trying to retain yeah. that fucking. Because he's trying, because he's trying to give these like he's like. Have you have you peaked? <laughs> I can't even do it. Oh man. Oh, uh, that's a good, oh my god. I'll allow that yeah, one. That, that was good. that was a good. I was like, I need that. I need to make that right now. I'll allow a, we a could, third master chef. Yeah. Uh, in should week. the I feel like the contestants can't be right. No, they have to. They have to that's also the, be yep, high. Uh-huh. Oh. I mean, you can't make, don't like you know you don't I give don't, them a fucking yeah, food yeah. processor and you know a three hundred and fifty degree oven you know yeah, you yeah, make yeah. them and like, then like you could have characters make a party because you know because you know there's so many different types of you know archetypes of smoker yeah that you could have like oh girl from Brooklyn with a single mother the couch she, potato yeah the couch potato guy who smokes but he's like a Wall Street millionaire yeah. you know and he's like I gotta smoke for the everything hip, the seventy hero yeah, hippie yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah man that's Holy great shit. yeah 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 I guess we gotta add that to the roster of shows yeah, we're producing that's uh phase nine phase nine phase nine we're bringing the fucking master keith master keith i don't know we gotta talk to gordon about that one first <laughs> see if he'll give us the- we just get knock off judges yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like we got some random scottish guy with a british <laughs> accent some bald italian that looks like we get ba- we get, <laughs> get borden <and> tamsey <laughs> i was gonna say we get a bald italian that looks like boss baby <laughs> Oh man, uh, where do we go from there? I kind of derailed it a little. I mean, bit. there's something I want to talk about, but there is nowhere to go yeah. from it. It's What's just that? like the, the worst segue of all time. What's that? It's just I've been going down my wiki holes lately. Before we started the that podcast, that sounds very uh, sexual. Right. I don't know why. Before we started the podcast, I was uh, sharing some knowledge to Dylan about the incredible show Kenny versus Spenny. I used to come, I used to be on mm-hmm. MTV or was it Comedy Central? I think it was MTV though point is it was this show that lasted in the states for like a couple seasons where these two best friends would do like very weird competitions against each other each episode reality but comedy yeah. etc filmed in a very like uh documentary very chill-esque it was never like highly produced or anything but that added to the comedy and the feel of the show yeah and i used to watch it when i was younger but i actually never first of all i never knew until like last week that the show got like six or seven seasons i was like holy shit and then i found out it's actually because it was a canadian show not only was it a Canadian show, it was one of Canada's most prolific shows and was named like in the top 10 most important Canadian TV shows at one point. It also spawned like dozens of remakes across different countries that were named and filmed in the exact same format. It was like Julio Wild. versus Bruno yeah, in Brazil and, was... and like Tad versus Jack in Australia and all this shit. It's kind of interesting. All good. But on that on that like wiki hole tangent, I didn't want to talk about Kenny versus Benny because I mentioned it to Dylan anymore. Very weirdly enough, I wanted to talk about the production of The Emperor's New Groove. Okay. Which is arguably one of Disney's best movies. Yeah, Have you seen it's one of my, It's one of my favorites. It's one of the better ones. Because it's very ones. different. I haven't watched it since I was like young. Yeah. But I remember it being good. So so let's see. There's so much to unravel here. There's so much to unpack. I guess, okay. I guess we'll start from the beginning here because it's a very interesting story. Okay. The movie, The Emperor's New Groove, 
when it started production in 96 it took about four years to make because it came out in 2000 yeah was originally going to be very much like other disney movies it was it was i think it was called uh kingdom of the sun so it was going to follow an incan prince and like the old aztec or, or not aztec ancient incan empire all that stuff um and the idea of the original script was that uh, David Spade, who was still on board to play, his name was Menko at the time, or Manko, not Kuzco. Okay. Uh, he was the emperor, and he meets a peasant who looks exactly like him, who was going to be voiced by Owen Wilson. The two of them switch places so that the emperor combo. can, like, you know, step down and, like, take a break. And then Yzma, who was also on board to be in the original plot, uh, turns him into a witch out of, like, spite or whatever. So, right. because once they find out that they changed him, he, she turns like the original emperor, who's the peasant now, into an emperor. Oh, okay. So that the peasant is the emperor now, and she yeah, can, like, yeah, do whatever yeah, she yeah, wants yeah. or whatever. Uh, that was the original plot for the movie, and even like you know, you remember that '70s show? Yeah. You know Laura Prepon? She's the girl that plays Donna in that show, the red hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she yeah, was yeah. supposed to play like a llama herder who meets the emperor, and then they fall in love, and then the emperor's like initial fiance falls in love with Owen Wilson, the replacement. It's like a whole thing. Okay, right? yeah, it's a whole different plot. Yeah. But long story short, and the the whole time it took to make this movie, it just fell apart. Like there were way too many moving parts, way too many. Yeah, I mean already right stuff. there, that's like four different plots exactly. right there. Exactly. Yeah. So long story short. I don't really have to spoil much. It just, it, it fell through. It fell pretty flat. Yeah. Another interesting thing to point out was, you know how, you know, when the Lion King came out, they had Elton John come and he fucking blew that script out of the water. Yeah. Tarzan came out. Phil Collins didn't have to go that hard, but he did. Oh yeah. So following in the footsteps, they hired another legend sting to make the music. For, oh, I feel like I know about for this. kingdom of the yeah. sun. But then what happened was Disney, literally like an executive for Disney came in and was like, you're this fucking close from getting your movie scrapped because this is just how shit is going. Mm -hmm. So apparently they got the two head writers to come in, like the two creators of the original movie. And they were like, you're both going to go home. Both of you are going to rewrite this script and you're both going to come in and pitch your rewrites. And I'm going to pick the one that works the best because that's how it's going to work. So it was like a contest. Exactly. Kenny versus Spenny. Pretty much. <laughs> we Full circle. Yeah. One of them went home and basically wrote like a a slightly watered down version of the original plot. Mm -hmm. The other one went home and, and wrote the and Emperor's wrote New Groove, a completely comedic retelling of it. Okay. Which essentially ended up being the Emperor's New Groove. So that's what, how the movie changed. Also very interestingly enough, the reason his name is Cusco and not Manco is because they found out that Manco in Japanese is a slang word for cunt. So they were like, probably not the best, best, best. I, movie. Feel like, I feel like you go for it. Right. But, uh, but here was my favorite thing about this whole thing thing and, and the main reason i mentioned this thing uh this thing the sting thing the sting thing uh when they first went to sting he wrote this whole fucking like six plus songs for the movie because it was originally supposed to be a musical like a lot of yeah, the yeah, Disney yeah, yeah. movies were at the time uh but then they essentially had to go to sting and be like uh we're not going to use any of that but sting being sting he's not a very like angry person he's known for like you know the tantric the meditation all that stuff he was just kind of like i was angered at first but i came to understand that it would make the movie better so i was like whatever and they even came to like an agreement with him where they were like we actually just want you to make two songs and we'll put three of the original songs on the soundtrack so you know the original song that starts the Cusco with the whole thing what's his name okay sting wrote that uh but he told disney that he didn't want to sing it and that they should find somebody with a younger voice because it's supposed to be like this loud thing. They ended up getting Tom Jones, who's like 11 years older than Sting. Yeah, but he's yeah. Uh, that is yeah. That's so it's Tom Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. That's a, that is Tom Jones. Yeah. And, now that I'm thinking, I'm like remembering. And it. Sting also wrote the like end credit song. Okay. And I think he sings that. But long story short, uh, the last part of this whole thing, which I thought was really really cool. Uh, Sting has basically been super chill about this whole situation the whole yeah. time. He's like, okay, no problem. I'll do it. And in fact, one of the agreements made early on was that he would do the music for the movie if his wife was allowed to like document the process for something she was doing, like okay. a film or something. So he was like, yeah, sure. Uh, you remember the, you know the, the, the ending of the movie where uh, initially Cusco wants to build a water park on Pacha's village and he's going to you know tear it down. Okay. Uh, but then he essentially, at the end of the movie, instead of tearing down the village... Cusco buys a house in the village and he spends his summers with the villagers and Pacha and the family and stuff like that. In the original ending of the movie, you know, he still learns his ways and he, he becomes friends with Pacha. Instead of tearing down Pacha's village, he tears down a rainforest and puts his water park there. 
when Sting heard that, he lost his fucking Oh, he was, shit, yeah, 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 yeah. He was He's like, like oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was basically like, are you going to tell me after all this work that we've done, the, the, this and the other, that you're going to fucking end the movie? Yeah. Not only with them deforesting this, but he's also like a big activist. The, du- the, like, du- uh, the WWF is like rocket launchers outside yeah, the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just like, what'd you say? <laughs> what? Huh? On top of that fucking In your fiction, the fictional rainforest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, <laughs> not the World Wrestling Federation, like the World yeah, Wildlife yeah, 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 Foundation. Yeah, wildlife. Yeah, they yeah. care a lot about like, just, you know. Just so anybody's not clear about <laughs> that one, but fuck it up. And not only that. I wish they were the same company. Yeah. That'd be great. And not only that, Sting is like a big proponent of like, uh, like what, what's it called? Um, just uh, the rights of uh, of indigenous people. Yeah, and oh like yeah, that. yeah. So as soon as he heard that, he fucking flipped out. And the reason that the script was changed to the ending it was today was completely sting. He was like, ah, "You get thank to, you, thank I'll, you, I'll get my fucking songs out of there." That would be that. fucking his. That that would be that would be Disney like not hiding their like they're not hiding under like this glitz and glamour yeah. of like we're a great company. You know, mm-hmm. that's very Disney. You know, hey, maybe maybe that wouldn't. Do you know about Superstar Limo? No. This is a fucking tangent, but... No, I love tangents. Okay, so Disney related, right? Yeah. So uh, Disney had a ride coming to... Uh, at the Was it the 2000s? I don't remember. They had a ride, brand new ride coming out, and it was supposed to be the hottest new thing. Mm-hmm. And basically, it was a on on-the-rail ride where you were in a limo, and you had paparazzi chasing you. Okay. And, oh, okay. Yeah. And it had about 50 to 60 cameos in it. So, like, there would be other famous people okay. yelling at you. You would run into a bunch of different uh, celebrities. celebrities and movie stars. And then the Princess Diana thing happened. Uh-huh. And they were like, yeah, we can't have paparazzi in this. Yeah. Like, the whole concept of, like, the pop. That's, pa- like, how she died. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, it became a slow ride. Like, a Take dark. It easy. Yeah, it can became a dark ride, and then instead of that, it was just like a tour of like r- of all the celebrities. Okay. So it was like a tour of Hollywood, but it was like r- done like it's a small world. Oh, but you're just so like people. So yeah, it was like famous people, but they were like these tiny caricatures. Oh, I see. And it was like probably like it's known as like the worst ride ever. Okay. Because it was like a bunch of like inside jokes about oh. how about like L.A. Got it. And it's like, oh yeah, she's from Long Beach, and it's like no, no one, one on vacation is gonna know who like you have like fucking European yeah, yeah, tourists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, like, like ooh, Long Beach. <laughs> like, <laughs> just they want to go on a fucking ride. They want to go on like the cru- the Jungle Cruise. Yeah, you know, yeah, they yeah. want to fucking go on Space Mountain. Oh man. And there's like tons of rides like that where it was like so. And like I remember I talked about this before, but there's also a ride in Sea World. Uh huh. That it's like a submarine ride, but it's a slow ride above ground in the Take sunlight. Take it easy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going for two there. I don't know why, but that one was... It, <laughs> Bob, <laughs> next time, please. Take it easy! <laughs> Got you. But uh, yeah, like they made a submarine ride that doesn't look like it's underwater. It literally shut down in six months. Uh, like the sun is shining. Yeah, through. literally, and it's in Tampa. It's like, how the fuck wow. are you gonna make a fucking submarine ride outside? Uh-huh. And it's like coral, but like you see all the people outside. It's like <laughs> they're they're walking on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Disney made a ride that was uh, was a like ten thousand leagues under the sea or whatever. Okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 it was that ride. And that one, they actually made like it, it was an uh, it was an actual working submarine. Oh, and you would actually go, it was like made in like the seventies too. Crazy. Like it was a really old ride, but it, like they actually did it that way. Uh-huh. And then you make a ride in twenty twelve that's literally an above ground. It's like offensive, you know. Yeah. Very sad. Yeah. Fucking amusement parks, man. I wanna, do have another thing I want to yeah. I want to throw in. No no catchy segues here this no. week. It's honestly speaking this is one of the few weeks that in like recent memory where we have all of the stuff we want to talk about preset to go but no like fluid way to jump between It's usually us. the opposite where we don't know but we still we make still it. We still manage yeah, to yeah, like yeah. weave like, through Like damn it. they actually They're, thought about this. Yeah, now we no, talked about what we were going to talk about. And on the spot we're just yeah. we're just fucking it up though. That's, that's really mm. what it is. I'm embarrassed. Yeah, that's how it be. <laughs> Anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about something that happened. I was waiting towards the end of the podcast to speak about it since we kind of started with some video game talk. Okay. But I wanted to talk about a very interesting acquisition that took place okay. on Tuesday, Tuesday morning. Uh, I know you know what I'm talking about. Yes. That, of course, was Microsoft's acquisition of Activision, Blizzard, and another cast, like the company that makes uh, Candy Crush, I'm pretty sure. King or Zynga? something? Not Zynga. It's like King or something like that. Something like that. But point is, 
They uh, uh what was it? Six point nine billion. It was like what I think they said it was the third largest deal ever made or something yeah. like that in yeah, history. Yeah, so I believe what happened, how that worked, was because Activision bought Blizzard and bought King, and then Microsoft bought them. Oh, I see. So yeah. it was just kind of like all they got all of it. Yeah, together. they got all of it together. Uh-huh. So which is actually not that. Uh, I'm. <laughs> I saw that before, uh-huh. and I was like, I just like. <laughs> All right. Can I have one? You want to try a? Yeah. There you go. You want to try a white what meat is... chicken tender bite, sweet barbecue? Yeah, All right. A little chewy. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> Microsoft. <laughs> Fucking killed me, bro. Fucking yeah, like that happens a lot. Like for example, um, Sleepy's the uh, furniture the mattress, store, yeah. the mattress store bought out all of its competition, and then Mattress Firm bought Sleepy's, Sleepy's. like a month later, and that's why there's only Mattress yeah. Firm. So now Mattress Firm owns like every single yeah, yeah, yeah. mattress store in America. That's why everything turned into Mattress Firm, and there's like that whole pyramid scheme shit that they say about it. Yeah, and it's just like oh they forgot because like when was the last time you ever saw somebody in a mattress firm? Never. Exactly. Mad comfortable too. Mm-hmm. I got kicked out. This is random, but I got kicked out of a Macy's once for uh, jumping on the bed. He told me this, yes. And then my friend got kicked out, and we were like, "Where'd you go?" He's like, "I took a nap." <laughs> anyway, back to the uh, the Microsoft acquisition. The reason I wanted to bring it up is because that's pretty fucking huge for video games and like the future of it. Uh, there's obviously the very big like. It's not even like a console war anymore. It's just kind of like a company war between Sony and Microsoft. Like, who's going to edge it out? If you, and I think, in my opinion, like the last one between PS5 versus what was it, Microsoft Series X? I think it's pretty fair to say PS5 won that one. That's the, the I don't even I don't even know the name of the console. That's mm-hmm. how I know you lost. Exactly. But Microsoft kind of hit back by buying every single fucking developer that makes like all the big games. Yeah, they're. I mean, it's it's confer like E3. They won E3. They like they got rocked in E3 too much, and now they're like, "All right, we own every exclusive game now, um, so <laughs> it's exclusive. Please buy it." I want to look up titles that Microsoft owns now, because that well, that's the thing. They also own all of the, like, um, for example, like Internet Explorer, right? Mm-hmm. How that's owned by Microsoft, and that's not Microsoft Edge. Yeah, that was originally Netscape. Uh-huh. And then they bought uh-huh. Netscape. So Microsoft has a history of just buying everything. Mm-hmm. They own it. They own Rare. I remember that. Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Diablo, Hearthstone, Overwatch, Starcraft, Starcraft, Candy Crush, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Guitar Hero, Skylanders, and Spyro the Dragon. Upcoming games: Diablo 4, Overwatch 2, and Call of Duty. Then they have Rare, who made obviously all the N64 classics. You know, Perfect Dark, Gold, and, and Viva Pinata. Don't you fucking forget. Sorry, sorry. I don't know what Everwild is. I don't even know Rare was still making things to be honest. Three four three for Halo. Yep, yep. These are these are the obvious ones. Mojang is a big one. The fact that they own Minecraft is like ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Not, not to mention they also bought Bethesda a while back, so they own all the, the Bethesda shit. Uh, I'm trying to look for like really, really like standout ones. What's Obsidian? Oh, all the Star Wars games. Yep. Fallout New Vegas. Double fine. Those are all the. Discord. Oh, it didn't happen. Oh, they tried to buy. These ones they tried to buy. I was about to say. Because, uh, no, Discord's supposed to be on PS5 pretty soon, actually. Yeah. I mean, they're trying. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, a lot of companies tend to do this where you want to just, like, buy out everyone. But, like, my, my, my thing is, is, like, I think what's going to happen with this is I think this is obviously a big deal for Microsoft and they're going to see success going forward. But I still think they lost the console war. And oh, I th- for sure. And I think, honestly, the console war is just dead at this point. I just honestly think, like, I don't I, – I can't see Microsoft making another Xbox. No. I well, think it's well, going to go – I sh- think, well, they also made every single Xbox and PC game compatible exactly. on the Microsoft Store, mm-hmm. which killed your own console exactly, because, because people, people were going to go it. to PC anyway. Mm-hmm. And now more people are like, well, now the console – the PS5 is way better. If I want, like, a kid or, like, a um, – like a 
a transport option, I go for the Switch. Yeah. And I wouldn't even bother with the Xbox. And, and that's what I was going to say. Even then, it's not like there's a console war between the PS5 and the Switch because they're two very, very different Yeah, they're, they're different fan bases. They're different games yeah. also. Yeah. You've got, first of all, Nintendo only develops games for their soft, their console. Not mm-hmm. only that, you know, the whole idea of the Switch being handheld, you can bring it with you. It's just mm-hmm. a different vibe. Yeah. So I like honestly think console. like the, the, what's going to happen is like if you want to play PC games, you will play PC games and you'll play the games that Microsoft offers and shit like that. Yeah, they're going to have their own store. Yeah. Or essentially. if you want to play a console game, you buy a PlayStation. Yeah. And that's pretty much what it's going to Yeah, gonna they're going to redo the Microsoft store essentially yeah. is what's going to happen. It's that they're, it's going to be a lot more more like Steam or Epic Games mm-hmm. where it's like a platform. And if anything, that's where the competition is going to rise. Yeah. It's going to be them versus those guys. It's already a competition. Yeah. I mean, Epic, Epic, literally Epic Games gave out last year, I want to say 2020 and 2021, they gave out on average four free games a year. That's crazy. And then around Christmas time, eight games. That's awesome. Just to give, just that's because it's competition. It's yeah. like, you know, I have, I don't even use the games, but I have like 50 games in my Epic account. Yeah. I have like Subnautica, I have Meat Boy, I have like all these games. It's like, I'm not going to play it, but like, you know, that, you know, that gets people on your platform. Mm-hmm. And then um, on like a bigger thing, when you talk about like, uh, buying shit a lot of times user base is more important than like actual like importance Mm -hmm. if that makes any sense can you clarify like uh for example um do you remember when facebook bought whatsapp yeah do you know how much they bought it for no 17 billion jesus the reason why they did that is because number one they didn't want to make a whole new thing for messenger they just took the platform from whatsapp transferred transferred the the messenger number two WhatsApp is used by I want to say like oh, two, bi- two yeah. billion people because yeah. it's used by all of India, yeah, all of Bangladesh, all not. of the Middle East. They all use it, so it's like Facebook was like, oh, we want world control. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So that's why that price was like you know seventeen billion, twenty billion. It's the you you know so it's like if you have a big user base, you know. Yeah. It's like Microsoft might even like buy Steam, and then it's like it's yeah. all it's all one. Yeah, it's crazy. Computer, store you know the last thing i was gonna ask is do you think they're gonna make all of those games like uh exclusive i don't think so they want to i mean they want to try well they they need they need a they well the thing is is now that they own the developers won't they just end up losing money if they don't have those games come out for other consoles anyway i think i think it would be a mix I think they'll str- try. They'll try to strategically, they'll strategically pick which. They'll ones pick they like, oh, peop- there's a lot of hype for this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make that one an exclusive. Got it, got or it. they'll do a thing where it's like, for the first month, it comes out a month early. It comes out three months early for our platform. You know what I can And see then them, it comes out for theirs. You know what I can see them doing? What? I can see Microsoft making a banging ass new Guitar Hero game. And then, make, and then making that an exclusive, and not only that, then they get to fucking sell the instruments and all that shit. Yeah, and even then, that there's already still a huge community of the people who play like Star Hero. Not and all only of that, that, the fucking they haven't made one, or at least in a, a, a traditional one, in over a decade. Because I know they made that one a little like six years uh, ago. They made that one for Xbox, but they but it was like everything was different. Everything was different, and they literally made it for the Xbox One. Yeah. And that didn't like so now that they can make one for PC, mm-hmm. it's like that would do so much better. Hell yeah, a little USB guitar, and then it's compatible with consoles too. Boom, that's it. That's a mm-hmm. selling point right there. Mm-hmm. Why don't they fucking hire me, Dylan? Yeah, that, that's, I don't know if the, I don't know how many. I mean, I'm sure I would play it, but I want to know like how long do we have to wait until that's really cool? Like, will, are people gonna find that really cool? Well, that's interesting because because like back in the day, the younger generation doesn't really have a guitar hero. Like they don't, have, have, but will they like it? That's the that's thing. The, but that's the thing. I, they, I, didn't, they don't have anything like it. That's we don't know yet. Yeah, so I think that's what they're thinking. They're like, oh well, kids can just use an iPad. Why do you need a guitar? But then I'm thinking like I think it would be a bunch of drunk thirty year olds buying it. Like yeah. if, it, if it was on console, because like Rock Band, I feel like it'd be a bunch of like drunk. But then I was thinking about this in a different way too, right? Because I was thinking about like games like Sly and Ratchet and stuff like that, and how those are games, or at least for me and a lot of other people like me, we grew up on that, and those games mean a lot to us. But yeah. like when we, as much as we want reboots and new versions of these games, it's hard for developers to do that because they either have to make additions and make changes to make it more widely accessible yeah. aka to the newer generation of kids or they just have to fucking scrap it and just make it for us like the people yeah. who grew up exactly with it. Yeah. and like not mm-hmm. necessarily adultify it but just kind of like know that they're making it for us no, and it's no. fan service it kind of hit me too that a lot of that is happening and i also like that i love it like and what's what we're gonna start noticing it more 
and that is like people from art like our age contributing are, like are not only are they going to be contributing to art and things like that but they're going to be in positions of power mm-hmm. and we're already starting to see that like i remember when the jonas brothers came back and i'm like that's <laughs> definitely some shit that's some motherfucker there's no way of fi- people from our generation are no, going to hold positions no, of power no, no, no. you remember when the jonas brothers came back you know what I'm saying, though? Like, there's no way a 50-year-old in a marketing meeting is like, we need to bring the Jonas Brothers back right fucking now. But there was definitely some intern that was like, yo, it fucking slapped. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, some shit at Sony. And then all of a sudden, they came back, and they were number one on the charts. Oh, shit. And, like, a lot of music is, like, Disney shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, Miley Cyrus is still big. Oh, yeah. She Her album was, like, top 20 or whatever. Like, I mean, it, far from the successful list on oh, this. Oh, I mean, I mean. But, no, no, because what I'm, what I'm I mean, about to bring up is I was recently reading one of those, the like, climb. Uh, <laughs> Take it easy. Fuck it, dog. <laughs> I was reading an article that was like Nickelodeon stars that like uh not left Nickel well they all left Nickelodeon, but like, you know, stars that had problems with the company in their yeah. time. So it's talking about people like Ariana Grande and Jeanette, Jeanette McCurdy. McCurdy and shit like that. But one that came up was uh this guy, Nat Wolf from the Naked Brothers band. Yeah. And what they were talking about is how the Naked Brothers band didn't technically end. It ended, but they didn't write a finale or anything like that because essentially what happened is the show ended due to creative differences. Yeah. Like Nickelodeon wanted the show to go one way, but the family, the you know, the brothers and the dad wanted it to go other way, uh, to go a different way. But apparently they talked to Nat and Alex Wolf recently and they were like, We're super down to do an Naked Brothers band reboot. Like we'll do a special on Netflix, but they're like, We want to do it our way and I was like, I don't wanna see that. I was like why the fuck after like is there no. gonna be a Naked Brothers Band reboot? No, I, I, the only way I want to see it. Do you remember the original Naked Brothers Band movie that spawned the show? I rem- I I remember the show more than the movie. Cause real quick, the movie was like a, it was supposed to be like a rocky rockumentary, yeah, like Spinal Tap about essentially. The kids, like, yeah, yeah, and it's about a fake band. The only way I'd want to see a Naked Brothers Band special is if they revisit that. And like all the like the fake band members are like it's a comedy and they're all like you know drugged out that's, or stupid that, shit like that's that. That's what I think. That but that's that's what I want. Yeah, that's what I want. Too. That's, that's what, what I want. I'm I want them to be like thirty. They're in their thirties and they're a bunch of dropouts. Exactly. And, like, yeah, and this like, goes back to like yeah. making shit for us and not for like exactly. Yeah. Because it can't. It's like you're gonna have like what a 28 year old dude. No, and, like, and it, it won't. It won't work because it's like you have to like if you're gonna do stuff for like our uh, for like the younger generation, it has to be a whole different concept. Exactly, it has to be something that like grasps to them. No one's gonna watch a thing about like a fake band. You would have to do it about like a fake rapper, yeah. <laughs> which would be great. Like a 12 year old rapper. That'd be great. Maybe one of the like members a, a, of the band jumped to that. Yeah, 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 that. yeah. He's a, he's a tw- the, like it's a mockumentary about a child rapper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that would work. All right. Fucking food. You ready for uh, jamaya? As I eat this uh, this white meat chicken. You know why I have these? Because the, no, it's because the school that I work at they like give the kids these prepackaged like care packages of snacks, snack packages, if you will. Okay, so you like uh, you stole. No, they uh they come with like Cheez Its and cereals and juices and stuff like that. But for some reason, all the kids hate these. Yeah. So they all take them out of the bag and then they give them to the teachers and they're like, "Do you want these?" So I have like three of these. Yo. And to be fair, I don't even like them all that they're, much. They're they're like I like yeah because so I don't a, hate them. They're not that bad. What I've learned is like if I'm gonna eat a jerky type of meat like this, it has to be beef. Chicken is way too tough. It just doesn't. Chick, go. Chick, honestly, I'm realizing this now. Like as someone who loves chicken. It's like v- not versatile at all. Yeah. Like you can do anything to a chicken, but very it's few. Not gonna be as good. Very few of those things are are like elegant or very good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a chicken cutlet, right? It's good, but you need a sauce. You need something else. You need to fry it the right way. You got to do this whole it, thing. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if you just make like a grilled chicken cutlet, it's gonna be the dr- it's gonna be the fucking desert. Yeah. It's gonna be the driest shit on the planet. I, mean, I don't know about you. I've had some juicy grilled chicken. Yeah, but if you you know, but you got to do it a specific type of way, or yeah, else for sure. you know, you can't just fuck around. Yeah. With it. I know. Thank. Fuck th- around and find out. Th- this is my favorite jam and yam segment right here. Fuck mm. around, and find out. <laughs> Anyway, I can start. I know what my jam is. I know mine too, but I forgot the artist, so you should go first. Uh, I actually wanted to go first because my jam has some interesting like factoids to go along with it. My song is called 50 Dumplings, and it's by Flower Villain. Do you know what Flower Villain is? No. I'll play you the song later, but it's this really like pretty beat. It's it's for lack of a better word, it is very flowery. It sounds it has like a lot of like fluttering flutes and things like that. 
but then the rap okay. comes in and it's super like hard and it's like a it's almost like a kind of a uh, trippy like 60s kind of uh psychedelic beat whatever mm-hmm. um i looked it up flower villain was a project that i think was done between uh, MF Doom, may he rest in peace, and Tyler the Creator. Okay, I a didn't remix even, album. I didn't even know about this. But the thing is, is when I was hearing the rap part of this song, I was like, that doesn't sound at all like MF Doom or Tyler the Creator. It sounds like Freddie Gibbs. Sure enough, I look up the lyrics. It's a remix of a Freddie Gibbs song named Terrorist. So it's the verse from the Terrorist the song on, by Freddie Gibbs on a completely different, like, flowery rap beat. That's nice. So the song of my jam of the week is gonna be Fifty Dumplings by Flower Villain. Pretty cool. Nice. It's just kind of cool that it's contributed by all these like awesome artists. My, uh, is it? Is it? I like how mine is also a collab between three different hey, artists. Look at that. Yeah. So my uh, yam is "Trip Through Hell" mm-hmm. by Sudier, DJ Smokey, and Nexus. Oh, those guys. Yeah. <laughs> so it's three different producers. They're all from France. They all make like lo-fi hip hop. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I believe how the song worked was that essentially like one had it for a day. They did what they wanted to do with it, handed That's it over. over. They added a thing or two. That's cool. They added a thing or two. So it's not really like you can't really hear it, but then you'll hear like another layer come in. And it was probably like, oh, that guy That's, probably yeah, added it. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's interesting. So, yeah, That's yeah, dope. yeah. So they did a, it was like four songs. I love and creative shit like that. Some of the songs are like, they're more cohesive, whereas the others are like, you know, it'll be more like you'll hear the three different songs, yeah, yeah. you know? And they put all their producer tags in it, so I love that shit. So like the first twenty seconds of every song is dun, like dun. is like, damn son, yeah, blah, blah, blah. like it's like yeah, all this yeah, shit, all like three. four different things. It's like what the fuck is this? What was yeah. it? Oh, what was the name of it again? Uh, trip through hell. Trip through hell. Yeah. Yeah. T H R U. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Got to got to specify on the three. Mm-hmm. And they don't sing, so it's like all instrumental and like like uh, samples. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's episode seventy four for you here. Uh, make sure to go ahead and like this episode if you yeah. enjoyed it because that's kind of the whole point. And if you didn't enjoy it, what the fuck? What's what's wrong with you? You could dislike if you. Oh, we're not gonna you can, see but, it, but if, you know, mm, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna see it in the YouTube analytics when I when I edit your videos. Uh, no, drop a like. We'd appreciate it. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. Like we mentioned earlier in the yeah. podcast, we've got some pretty cool stuff cooking up. Hopefully, want to get it out by like February because unfortunately, I've got some medical tests I got to get done for my brain. But after that, I'm like full go mode to make some some cool shit. Um, other than that, what are we commenting this week, Dell? Commenting, wamenting, bro. Oh, oh I love I when I ask you a question you, and, and I don't answer this, it. Yep, just silence. Okay, what if I eat this food and makes, don't answer it? I would really not like that because oh, it makes okay. editing this fucking show a pain in my ass okay. more so than it already is. Damn. Yeah. That sucks. Right? Oh, boy. Don't do this to me, Dylan. Don't do this to me, Dylan. Don't do this to me, Dylan. <sighs> Sorry, Bob. Make sure to comment a uh, video game you're looking forward to. That's actually pretty Because we were talking about acquisitions. And yeah, we were that, looking at honestly, it, that is a pretty good one because I am looking for new games to play. I'm like trying to look. We're just in that weird era where not that many good things are coming out. And if they do, it's far and it's few and far in between. So. What is a game you are excited about? I'm kind of will, I want to play the new Horizon Zero Dawn that's coming out for Forbidden West, I think it's called. So, yeah. Other than that, we appreciate y'all and uh we can't wait to see you next week for episode 75 when we are in a new basement, a blue basement. Crazy, right? Will it actually look different? I think it'll, it'll look it'll oh, look, look real look different. different for yeah. sure. And no front mission evolved poster. <laughs> Tired of looking at that shit. Yeah, right. Different yep. po. Get a different. What other what a poster are we put in there? Can we put like a, like a sexy poster? Of what? I don't know. Like a like a female. A female? What female? Can I like Photoshop one of you guys' faces on? Yeah, it? you can. <laughs> Aretha Franklin. <laughs> <laughs>